You ready to start the show? I'm ready. I'm ready. We're here. We're here, and we're live here. We're live. Yeah. Live, as per usual, on Facebook. Live from Facebook. From the book of face. Yeah. That sounds like a joke of yours, though, what I just said. No, my jokes are funny. <laughs> it's definitely a Nicole-level joke. Whatever. I am funny. I, I really enjoyed last week's show. I thought we had a good show last week. We did. Week. We I did. think there were some good comments. Love the I, background. Yeah, I love, oh, yeah, oh, I love John that. John did an awesome job on the background. Dun, 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 dun. I hope we have the same background right I know. now. I feel like, though, we still need to get Nancy in here to do the voiceover for the intro, like to okay. the Nicole and Craig show. Okay. All right. I got you. We'll be like Jimmy Fallon, but the Nicole and Craig show. It'll be fun. Yep. Just like the Jimmy Fallon show, but nothing like the Jimmy <laughs> Fallon show. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Yep. Unless he does, <laughs> unless he does the uh, show here. Shout out to NWI Media. Nice table they got out there. Coffee table. It's also a cooler. Yeah. How cool is that? We need a band. That's what we a need. A band? Yeah. Like they I can be like, get Ethan. Ching. You know what Ethan I mean? Get like, his trombone. For your jokes and stuff. Yeah. Ethan goes back to school in like two weeks though, right? So yeah, he does. That's he does. That's going to help us. We could do it we'll Zoom. record something. Yeah, that's yeah. true, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Anyway. Who knows, folks? We got a lot of good stuff planned. But I know what you're thinking right now. Get to it, guys. Get to it. Yeah, you're thinking Craig's boring already today. I'm thinking the same thing. Don't worry. I know. I know. I'll try to do better. He did not have any sugar or coffee before this show. I had some coffee. Oh, did you? I did. Okay. And then I'm having vitamin water. With no sugar. So that's not going to help us Brought you by selenium. (laughs) There's selenium in here. Literally before he drank it, he had to read all the vitamins that came with it. I don't know why. I had to make sure there's no sugar. Ugh. I don't drink sugar. So I promise you, our show topic is going to be a little bit better. We did some... Um, I'm already on mute. Oh, did you? Okay, good. We did some brainstorming, that kind of stuff. We always do that at our walks and whatnot. So we came up with some nice show ideas. Although Joanne might, from my team, might have come up with us a day today. We're going to pretend like it's ours, though. <laughs> wow. No, no, don't give Joanne credit? I did. What a credit thief. Thanks, Joanne, for this awesome show topic. Thanks, Joanne. Yeah. That's all right. Joanne knows. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do, you know, last week's show was fun, and we're going to do it in the same kind of, I don't know, thought process, I suppose. We're going to do five things you should not know as a realtor. These are things you should not be answering for your buyer. These are things that you should not be an expert. possibly be an expert on. Nope. There are some, there's always caveats with everything. Yes. However, for the most part, you don't know anything about this stuff, nor should you. Yes. And don't pretend that you do. Stay in your lane. Right? Stay in your lane. That's what we're going to talk about right now. Stay in, in your lane. Number five, stay in the lane. This one we get we do get asked quite frequently, I'm sure. Demographic information and most importantly... Schools. Schools. You know what? Most, most towns around here, we all know what high school and address goes to. However, we have a lot of overlapping areas we've yep. got you know one of the school systems built a new middle school i don't know it's probably about five years ago six years ago the now st john hanover like those are those are big yeah. areas where they're even right now moving lines and doing stuff you know only tell people what school district it's in based on the township that's it that's all you should be saying as a realtor because it's one of the easiest ways to get yourself in trouble or ask the buyer to verify that it's, yes. if schools are important to a buyer, make sure they verify that the school system is what they are expecting. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can check. The best place I've found to check is not necessarily just the school's website, but you can call. If, if you know your, your child's going to be on a bus, you can call the transportation department and they will verify what bus is going to pick that child up when. Yeah. All that kind of good stuff. And most importantly, let you know what school that bus is going to deliver that kid to. So that would be very important, you know, (laughs) to know where your kid's going. It's good times. And the other half of that is demographics, right? We all know Uh, fair housing. Yes. Fair housing. We do have testers, guys. They're still out there. They're going to call and ask you questions to make sure that you know how to answer fair housing rules and regs. Please make sure that you actually are doing this correctly when you're talking to people. Yeah. I had, I had a, I had a buyer just last month ask me that, you know, and it's like, Thankfully, I, I could tell you this, 20 years I've been doing this now, in the beginning of my career, you it would almost come up every single buyer. Now it's very rare, but it still yeah, comes up. You know, they'll does. be like, they'll be like, hey buddy. Yeah. I'll, they'll, they'll look dead in the eyes. Hey, hey buddy, uh, 
you know, you know what I mean? How's the neighborhood? <laughs> and you, you're like, you know what I'm talking about. Uh huh. Like they don't come out and say it, which I like, you know. And then I just, I, you know, I used to, I, I've done so many things over the time. Like I would just play dumb. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, you can call the police department and get crime statistics and stuff like that. I always recommend that. I don't touch those questions. Like um, a ten foot pole. No, you know what? You were just setting yourself up for failure. Uh, and quite frankly, I don't know. I, I, I stay. I, I avoid those. You can give links to websites that have demographic information, but I usually just ref- let them. Hey, call the police department. You know, get you can get demographics there. My canned response is every city has their own demographic information, so you can go to the city's website and pull it up for any city that you're in. So that yeah. gives them demographics, that gives them the crime rate, that gives them everything, and that's an easy way to do it. You know, I think especially over the last five years or so, we're pretty diverse here in Northwest yeah. Indiana at this point yep. now. So um, we're well integrated. I think so. Yeah. So a melting pot, if you will. You know, and with more, you know, don't Illinois. melt people, everyone. We do not condone that. No, no melting with of humans. More Illinois people coming over and all that God, other stuff. More selenium. Oh God. God, can I talk? You have been talking over everybody this week. Mm. Good Lord, don't swallow in my ear, please. Zero sugar. Ugh. Um. So I think that's the big thing to remember is just you know that question is a statistics question only, and that is it. There, there is no further that you go into that answer. Yeah, I agree. And no matter how, I'm like, yeah, come on, buddy. You know what I'm talking about. No matter how much of that nonsense they give you. How's your neighborhood? Yeah, I don't know. You know, the purchase agreement specifically Buy the says house and find out. That they're supposed to go morning, noon, and night to check out the neighborhood and that we're not responsible for it. And you need to make sure you keep that in mind when you're talking about demographics with your clients. I think we beat that one to death. Number four. <laughs> One of these days we're going to do this show just like a radio announcer the entire time. Number four. I can't do the cool voice like Attorney that. slash legal advice. None of us are attorneys. We're I don't even licensed. care. In, unless you do have a law degree, I guess. If you have a law degree and you pass the bar exam and you are legally authorized to operate as an attorney. I guess. Then maybe you could give legal advice as a real estate agent. But outside of that, no. And we yeah. walk that fine line every day. What's legal advice? What's in the purchase agreement? You know? You always have to think to yourself, should I be telling your client this, right? Here's, um, and this is a great example that actually we, we dealt with somewhat recently. We had a buyer went and did a final walkthrough on a house. They did not like the condition of the property and the agent had the opportunity to tell that buyer, hey, if you don't like the condition, you don't have to close on it. Now, technically that is what's known as breach of contract and it, a real estate agent is not legally does not have the legal capacity to tell a buyer to breach their or to advise a buyer to breach a contract. The correct answer would be I I really strongly recommend and this should be in writing by the way um, that you should talk to a real estate attorney, attorney about your options. Attorney. Yep. Yep. Talk to an attorney. Yep. Do I care if they really talk to an attorney or not? No. But I will. I will. Strongly recommend that a, in writing. That advice, yes, because yeah. then you know we can say we did what the buyer or seller wanted us to do, but we told them to talk to an attorney because you know we have to do what the clients tell us to do because that's our jobs, right? However, eh. it's our jobs to also make sure that um, we're helping protect our client too. Yeah. 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 Yep. You're not an attorney. No legal advice. Just it, cut and dry. I don't care if you've seen it a hundred times. I don't care what. You're not an attorney. Don't oh. write stupid stuff in the contract. Yes, that was what I was just going to say. We just had one recently that literally changed the timeline for response on inspection. And it's like, dude, you're not an attorney. You can't rewrite the inspection and say, like, if the seller doesn't respond in time, it doesn't mean they accepted the repairs. Like, no, like that is not like we're not attorneys. You can't do that. You can't black out the lines and do that stuff. Yeah. Don't do that crap. Nope. We I don't a, like I'm it. I'm a managing broker myself. And I always tell agents, keep it simple. You know, if 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 ten different professionals picked up your contract and read your contract, they should have a, they should all have the same expectation of what's going to happen. And if it's if it's not clear, fix it. If you're using stupid, uh, whereas, um, hereby, uh, you know, stupid legal terms, yep. those have legal precedent. Like those have meaning for contracts. You should never use whereas. You know, attorneys use it. Yes. 
You're, we're not attorneys. Or redactions. Redactions, stupid seen, stuff like lines that. Lines through stuff. You're, only the attorney can do that. Our zip forms is approved by the state attorney for Indiana for the real estate stuff. Like, oh, you don't cannot, say it. That's not true. That's not true. The real estate by? commission. Well, first of all, it's done by an IAR. Like, IAR has an attorney review it. That's what I mean. Right. Yes. But that's not, that has nothing to do with the government. Like, that's not I didn't a say government. It was government. You said by the state's, you said the state's attorney. Oh, I meant the state commission. I meant real estate commission. Sorry. And not the commission, the real estate association. It's not, the Indiana Association of Realtors is not a government entity. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't. I was just clarifying. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to split not hairs. Not government. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying the the contract does not get approved by anyone in the government. It gets approved no, by. No, it's approved by an attorney. The, the association. Yes. So. But. So you're not an attorney. Don't redact. Don't do that kind of but, stuff. But uh, you know what? There's always, whenever there is a legal battle, there's always two attorneys, and they all have, they both have the same facts, but they both have two different outcomes that they're looking for yep. and interpretations. So don't, so don't, and I'm not knocking attorneys. Or attorneys are very awesome. So that's um, their job. Some of them are. Yeah. yeah. Just mm -hmm. like any other profession, there's some good realtors, and then there's some uh, some people that should be salespeople <laughs> and not realtors. <laughs> All right, because realtors have to follow code of ethics, right? That's right. All right. Number three. Numero trace. Appraisal. Appraisal. Oh, God. This I put drives this on here me for him up on the purpose. freaking wall. Because I wrote the show today. Thank you. And she does it all the time. That's not going to appraise out. All the if time. I had a nickel for every time I heard her or one I of do your not agents do that say, all the time. I don't, that's never going to appraise out. Or, you know, there's no way that's going to appraise. Can you stop? This is this is one of his <laughs> bad habits is he lumps it all together and thinks like it's every day happens all the time, 24-7. Hold on. I know half the agents watching also do this nonsense. <laughs> well, it's never going to appraise. And you know what? The longer you've been in this business, I can guarantee you I've seen crazy things appraise out that I never thought would. Yep. I've seen well, things get... Especially now. Yeah. I, I've seen things get cut on appraisal that I never thought would. Mm -hmm. So you know what? And I also know this. If you gave 10 different appraisers the same address and just said, go appraise this for what you believe it's worth in today's market, you will get 10 different numbers. Yep. I would guess eight of them will be very close. And then there's going to be one outlier that's crazy high, one outlier that's crazy low. Yep. And I think if 10 realtors do it, you're going to have the same the same proportion. So I think appraisal, we just need to remember, you know, you do comps, you give the buyer or seller the information that you have, and then tell them about the market and let them dictate the price that they want to do, right? Mm, you can really taste the vitamin B3 in this too. Uh, so weird. Um, mm, and a touch of B5, actually 100% of B5. This is so not funny. It's like super painful, I feel like. So Maybe I'm we should sure drink why. before shows like alcohol, not, I guess. not just vitamin water. <laughs> Craig on vitamin water. But anyway, um, appraisals in general, like we're not appraisers. There's a reason why we're not. If anybody's ever pulled up, like just let's say an FHA appraisal, you know, the 40 page document they go through, the pluses, the minuses, you know, um, different neighborhoods, you know, sometimes you gotta stay in the neighborhood, sometimes you gotta go out. It really, you really, really have to know the area really well and that's what the appraiser's job is. It's just like you shouldn't be given lending advice, you shouldn't be giving appraisal advice, you shouldn't be given insurance advice, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Stay in your lane, realtor. Stay in your lane. Yeah, and don't give yourself extra work. Like, I feel like the people that do that are just giving themselves extra work and causing extra problems. Like, come yeah. on. Just stacking targets on your back. Right? Just. <laughs> <laughs> like, you should, like, bear it. And then you're like, oh, my God, you're, like, rocking after, you know, busy season because you made so many problems for yourself. Hold on. What? Number two. <laughs> Finance questions. Ugh. Now, this one is, um, this one's on here for a reason. Yes. However, it's not necessarily like you, you can never know. talk about yeah. financing or anything like that. It's, you know, we should let clients know the options. Yeah. But we should, we have to be very careful with what we're saying. You know, if we're saying, oh man, I see these fees are really high, but you might not know that the borrower might have a, a borderline credit score. They might have something in their history that, that is causing a little bit of they a rate ask, increase or something. They asked for points so they could buy their rate down. Yep. Wait, wait, who would buy? I just saw a closing the other day where someone a buyer bought the points, and it's like, well, it's the lowest interest rates ever. Maybe, Why would, they, uh, had, maybe they had bad credit, and they nah, had to buy their rate down. I don't know. No, they, Well, no, you that doesn't isn't the way it normally goes down. Well, it's, it's, it's Usually it's a lender that's, you know. Yeah, charging extra fees. I get it. Yeah, but still, yeah. like it's not... 
Not usually, but the sometimes. Buyer, the buyer chose the lender, right? Because we can't choose a lender for them. They chose to work with this person. They saw the fees up front. The lender has to disclose their fees, you know, when they're um, doing that. The loan, what's that called? Loan estimate? Something like that? I can't remember off the top Closing of Closing disclosure or the CD or whatever? No, in the beginning. They have to give them like oh, a, the a loan estimate truth in sheet. lending or the, yeah, what's the other thing, one? The truth in lending or the... Good it's called faith loan estimate. something. Good yeah, faith yeah estimate. that's it. That's it's it. called loan something. Good faith estimate. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> like I know. I'm glad you're interpreting my wording. Um, but yeah, so you guys, you know, calculating out payments for them, doing that kind of stuff, that's really the lender's job, not ours. Um, you know, and then just making sure that you're not really diving deep into finance, that you're staying on the surface and letting the lender go underneath with the finance. Yep. Oh, you don't have anything else to say about finance? Nope. Okay, then. All right, then. We're going to move on to number one, because I think this is what people do the most of and are probably the worst at not doing, like, is you're not a home inspector. You don't you know where there's You are not a home from. inspector. Is it a defect? Is it not? It, that is for the home inspector to decide. And then you work it out on inspection response. And I feel like the home inspectors take a lot of crap already. Like, they I, do. I think we... We blame them for everything, but you gotta remind your buyers in the state of Indiana and most states in the in the United States, buyer or, or a home inspection has to be what's called a non evasive home inspection, which means the home inspector is not allowed to, you know, they're allowed to take the cover off the electric panel. That's but that's really call. about it. Yeah. You know, if if a wash or if a, like a let's say a water heater is not lit, they are not allowed to light that water heater. Mm -hmm. A breaker's turned Nor off. Nor should they. They're not allowed to turn the breaker on. Yeah, they have to. Yeah, they can operate the house as a normal, reasonable homeowner, as much as like, or as far as switching on lights and things like that. Obviously, testing outlets, doing all that kind of stuff. But so I, I remember a buyer got all mad because it was like a shower was leaking behind the wall, but it was a tiled shower, so there was no signs on the tile Visually. that there was yeah. anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Behind it, there was no signs anything was wrong. And they were mad and wanted to like sue the home inspector yep. because they didn't know. And I said, well, how on earth would a home inspector know? And they said, well, they should have. I'm like, well, how? You know, like what? Yeah. How would they? And it I think that's make any sense. the home inspectors have a lot of disclosures and that thing they have everybody sign and whatnot. But what I'm talking about is like, you know, you looking at something and going, oh, you know, there's water leaking there. Oh, you know, this this basement looks like it's had seepage before or, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Like this crack in the ceiling means that the house is falling apart. Like you can't say stuff like that to your clients. You know what I mean? Like we try not to go to inspections in general at all because that is the buyer's time to be with the inspector by themselves with nobody else, you know, breathing down their necks to actually look at the house with a set of eyes that has nothing to do with the transaction. Yeah. If I was an inspector right now, I could tell you, I could taste the calcium and the zinc in this in this water. Lame. So eh, lame. They all can't be winners, kid. I know, right? So do you have you any know movies that's from? No. I got an aspirin. Why do I not know what that's from? Because it sounds familiar the way you said it. I Come don't on, know. someone put it in the put it in the comments before I uh what movie before I is? give the movie up, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'll give you ah, I, I can give you a hint. Aspirin. It was uh I will call it a Christmas movie. Oh, this is why I know it, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, I don't John! know. John! John, you know what movie I'm talking about? He says no. At least we heard John for once. I know, right? Yeah. He never says anything. He's probably sitting at that awesome new table he's got. Yeah, I know. I am super jealous of the table. I'm not going to lie. Jealous. Yeah, that table is cool. Yeah. It's a Bluetooth speaker I think I saw on it. John, is that a Bluetooth speaker too? You can what? charge. You could charge your phone truth. on it. I saw the USB thing. You could charge your phone. You could keep your beverages cool. Yes. You can play music from your phone. I mean, that table does it all. Yep. Yeah. It was awesome. What does your table do at home? <laughs> like let stuff be set on it. <laughs> Lame. It does nothing. Else. Nice old table. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What was the movie? You got off track, squirrel. Oh yeah. Well, I was still giving people more time to think. Well, I think that they probably Google. I'll it give by you. Now. Uh, I'll give you a hint too. It was Billy Bob Thornton in Bad Santa. Uh, <laughs> I am not good at hints. I haven't seen that. Remember, he got drunk and he ate all the kids' advent calendar yes. snacks, and then <laughs> and then he woke up and realized what he did. And so he filled it with aspirin. He filled it with all kinds of stupid stuff around the house, and the kid uh, opened it up. I got an aspirin. Oh, that's funny. He said a curse word. Yeah, he did. Heck, kid, they can't all be winners. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Love All that right. part. That cracks me up. All so, right. Wait, are we going to talk about the cool new thing we have coming up? What's that? Sponsorship. Do we have one yet? No, but we're going to talk about how we can get 
you know, people can sponsor Stay our tuned, shows and stuff. Where you can sponsor the Nicole and Craig show. Yes. Looking for sponsor. You could call our, uh, you can call our, our uh, what do you say? Our agent, John. John. <laughs> from uh, NWI Media. Yes. And he can Greatest explain. media company in Northwest Indiana. Yep. We're going to be doing sponsors. They're so good. They they shorten Northwest Indiana to NWI. I know. Love it. They're so awesome. Yeah. But YouTube, podcasts, Facebook, all that stuff. We are on the book. We are on Instagram, everything. The book. I know. I'm going to call it that from now on. I kind of like We're also, it. you can find stick. us on AOL. <laughs> that would be my space. You see one of those CDs? MySpace. You see one of those CDs at the grocery store where you get like a thousand free hours? No. Oh, yeah. That Remember that? AOL. How yeah, they, got how they, mail or whatever. How they say you only get so many hours in the internet? Like that's. Uh, I think they used you know to what? charge for that by then because it was on the phone lines, just like you used to get charged I wish for I was long in distance a, calls. I want to be in a boardroom at an AOL, like a, like a CEO meeting or something. Like, What do they do? Like, guys, we really put all these eggs in these CDs, and gosh, we're just... I think we got to change our they business the, plan. They were the biggest thing, though, back then. And remember, we oh, couldn't use sure. our phones till after 9. That was for a while. I don't remember that. Because you got free minutes after phone? nine. Your cell phone. Oh, I don't know. After no. nine o'clock. Stuff like that. Yeah. That's back in the day. Were you not cool enough to have a cell phone? Oh, I got to take this oh, call. He's got to take this call. Huh. All right. We'll see you guys next Friday. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Oh.